Good morning. I'm Gary Ritchie. And I'm Mandy Ritchie. And uh, we want to welcome you to the table this morning. And as we get started, we thought we would share a little story. Okay, so a few weeks ago, it was laundry day on a Sunday in our house. And um, in an effort for me to, uh, I do the laundry in our house, in an effort for me to teach my sons to, uh, to uh, become more independent and wash their clothes, my son Cal, who's about to go off to college, uh, took a load of laundry from the washer and put it in the dryer. Unfortunately, it was not his clothes that he did that. Um, it was Mandy's clothes. Uh, and um, there were some tense moments when she found out that her clothes had been dried. He was trying to uh, be helpful, um, but um, she uh, quickly told him uh, in, in not so kind words, um, Cal, I don't dry my clothes. I hang them up. Have you never noticed in the laundry room that our clo my clothes have been hanging up? Yes. And Cal, uh, being oblivious as he is sometimes, <laughs> he said, I've never noticed. And uh, my reply, being the peacemaker in the family, uh, is uh, maybe you should pay more uh, closer attention uh, to what's going on around you. And so this story has kind of stuck with me as we've been thinking about what's happened in the past few months when we've been away from our campus family. And while we haven't been able to always pay attention to campus members, we have been able to pay attention to what's going on around us. Um, I'm the worst neighbor. I have said it before. I'm an absentee neighbor. I barely know the people who live around me, but that's really changed in the past few months. I now know that there are four 2020 high school graduates on our street alone in our neighborhood. More in our whole neighborhood, but on our street, there are four. I know that the lady who lives across the street from us is a healthcare worker. And the way we know that is that she has blue lights on her porch. Gary asked her one, one day, why, are you, why do you have blue lights? And she told us. And so now we know more about her. Also, her husband takes their boxer for a ride mm -hmm. in their Jeep, yeah. takes their dog for a ride. Um, the people who live next door to us, uh, they have a dog named Sadie and a daughter who's Evelyn Ann's age named Devin. And um, they have a baby girl. She's 18 months old. Her name is Dion. And while her daddy weed eats, she sits in her stroller out in the front yard and waves at everybody as they walk by. And a few streets over, I've um, met Geneva. Geneva's grandsons are in town this week. Four boys, age two to 10. And uh, they're playing out in the, on their scooters. And um, Geneva's so excited that they could come and see her um, because she's worked all through um, the shelter in place. She works at Publix and she was kind of concerned that it wouldn't be safe for them. So they haven't been able to come see their grandma until now. The thing is, we may not have seen the campus family, but we know our neighbors now. We're paying attention to what's going on around us. And a couple of months ago, Dusty did a, a whole series on the table. And one of the things he said in that series is sometimes you have to break the table so that you can put it back together in a way that brings more people to it. We've been wondering if maybe what's been happening over the past few months is that the table is being broken, but it's being put back together in a way in which we can know more, love more, serve more people who live around us and who operate in our neighborhoods. Okay, so in Luke 10, uh, it's a very familiar story. Jesus talks about inheriting eternal life and uh, what we at campus call the good life. And uh, I want to read that to you right now. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. What must I do to inherit eternal life? He asked. What is written in the law? Jesus replied. How do you read it? The expert replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your strength and all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. Good answer, said Jesus. Do it and you'll live. Looking for a loophole, he asked, and just how would you define neighbor? 
Jesus answered by telling a story. There was once a man traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho. On the way, he was attacked by robbers. They took his clothes, beat him up, and went off, leaving him half dead. Luckily, a priest was on his way down the same road, but when he saw him, he angled across to the other side. Then a Levite religious man showed up. He also avoided the injured man. A Samaritan traveling the road came on him. When he saw the man's condition, his heart went out to him. He gave him first aid, disinfecting and bandaging his wounds. When he lifted, then he lifted him up onto his donkey, led him to an inn and made him comfortable. In the morning, he took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper, saying, Take good care of him. If it costs any more, put it on my bill. I'll pay you back when I come back. What do you think? Which of the three became a neighbor to the man attacked by robbers? The one who treated him kindly, the religious scholar responded. Jesus said, go and do the same. So when Jesus was asked, how do we have the good life? He didn't say, go to church every Sunday, sing three songs and have a prayer. And that's probably a good thing because we can't do that right now. Mm -hmm. We can eventually, but not right now. What he said was love God and love people. And in the story, the Samaritan was the one whose heart went out to the man when he saw him and he acted on it. And that's our job. Our job is to love our neighbors. Our heart should go out to them and we should love them. We should serve them. We should pray for them. We should talk to them. We should build a relationship with them. So as we gather at the table today, uh, we challenge you to think about uh, what it looks like to be a neighbor uh, in your neighborhood today. Um, maybe each family can answer the question, how is God calling me to love my neighbor? How can I be more like Jesus to the people who live near me? So uh, I'm going to say a prayer. And then as you partake at the table, um, know that we love you and we miss you. Miss you. And uh, we're grateful to have this moment with you. Let's pray. Our God who is in heaven, we're thankful. We're thankful for the life that you've given us and the way that you sustain us and the way that you bring beauty into our lives every day. We're thankful for Jesus. We're thankful for the love that he showed us, especially by dying on the cross. And uh, we ask your blessing, God. We ask that you uh, uphold us and sustain us. And we ask that you give us um, a greater vision of your kingdom around us every day. Thank you for giving us the good life. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.